New England Living is brought to you by Clark, Sub-Zero and Wolf, Kohler and Seven Tide. On this episode of New England Living. There's how many floors? Five. Five floors. Five. How about we start at the bottom and work our way up? I like that. Let's go. All right. You are dealing with uh, a piece of art, really, that was done by a master of the art. She's a perfectionist. I can see that. She likes <laughs> Santa Cods. <laughs> is it your first time strolling? It is. I love it. Yeah, so yeah, good, so right? Just, <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's beautiful. <laughs> Welcome to New England Living, I'm Parker Kelly. And I am passionate about art, architecture, and design. I also love to travel, meet new people, and I'm definitely a foodie. Join me each week as I travel all over this beautiful region, showcasing the most spectacular homes and meeting the key players involved in creating them. To top it off, I'll cook up some delicious dish with a chef, and we'll finish it off with a celebration of it all. I'm Parker Kelly, and this is New England Living. Today I'm on my way to Boston, Massachusetts, to a neighborhood known as Beacon Hill, one of the oldest and arguably one of the most picturesque neighborhoods in America. With federal, Greek revival, and Victorian architecture, and charming, winding, narrow brick walkways, this neighborhood, which is less than one square mile, is filled with history and is a place where poets, politicians, and philanthropists alike have all called home. Beacon Hill was first established in 1708 from a cow path that led to Boston Common, the oldest park in America. Before the American Revolution, Beacon Hill was just grazing land containing only a few country estates. Today, Beacon Hill is home to a lively community of nearly 10,000. I'm on my way to meet homeowner Cynthia in her renovated and beautifully restored townhouse on the flat of Beacon Hill. The iconic home, originally constructed in 1828, was one of the first buildings in a series of row houses. Cynthia, an executive in a large textile firm, was born and raised in Boston. And though she raised her family in the suburbs of the city, she always desired to come back to the hub, but was waiting for the right property. And this was it. We're going to meet this homeowner, take a tour of this magical historical home, and then Cynthia is going to turn her kitchen over to a local chef and me, and we're going to celebrate New England living in Beacon Hill. Hi. 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 <laughs> Parker. Nice to meet you, nice Parker. Nice to meet you, Cynthia. Cynthia. Beautiful. Thank you. What a spot. Thank what a location. You. Not bad. I would say Not right bad. in the center of everything. Where do you want to begin? Um, how about if we... There's how many floors? Five. Five floors. Five. How about we start at the bottom and work our way up? I like that. Let's go. All right. All righty. So, this is where all the action is. This is the best part about the house, right here. Uh, parking. Parking. City parking. Yeah. When you live in Boston on Beacon Hill, this is quite a treat to have, is parking. So, Very rather cool. than go right up to the kitchen, I'll show right. you the family room. Yes. And it's just very cozy. Mm-hmm. So this is one out of eight working fireplaces. All working. All working. That's incredible. That's such a bonus. Yep. All right, Parker, let's go up. <laughs> All right. So this was the kitchen, and as you can see, there was probably an addition done, and I think it was probably in the 80s. Today in Beacon Hill, you would not be allowed to do that. Okay. The chandeliers are new. I think they're great. This is a house for chandeliers. And it there's a lot is. of them here. I don't know if you've noticed, but there's quite a few. So and, far, I am noticing. And they kind of eat it up, the house. You know, um, I like chandeliers. Yeah, well, with these beautiful high ceilings. And also the painted ceilings. Want to go into the living yes, room? Yes, of course I do. You're going to meet the person whose company made these drapes. She's one of my friends. Really? Yeah. One she, of your... Oh, yeah, tell me about your... Your, yeah. your friends, my friends that are coming to our party tomorrow night. Right. So when I lived in Pride's Crossing, which is a part of Beverly, one of the women um, that was in our carpool at the time we had kids in middle school, um, she got diagnosed with cancer, breast cancer. And she wrote us a letter. There was a few women in the carpool. And she said, you know, we're all so busy and everybody says, let's get together. But we never do. Mm. So we started 
doing things monthly, and I think we're up to almost 18 years of doing this, and it, we, we feel pretty proud. Once we, a month? Yeah. But you rotate each person oh, yes. uh, mm -hmm. hosts it? Yep. And so this is a really nice activity. Well, it worked out, didn't it? <laughs> it did. It did. Well, I'm We've sorry never done this before. Friend, We've never done this. Oh, she's fine, by the way. Yes. Oh, oh she's what? totally fine. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's great. She's great. She licked it, and what she. What a beautiful um, thing! And then now the celebration continues. Absolutely. And she's here to enjoy. And she's not going to be with us, though. She lives in California, but she comes most of the time. But regardless, we all get together, yeah. and we've had we've learned how to fence. We've learned how to canoe and kayak. And oh, so real adventures. Real oh, we try to do adventures. Yeah. Do you get anxious York. about your next? Like, what am I going to do? That's going to. Little do? bit. <laughs> but they can't top this. No. This is fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a TV show. I don't know. We're fencing sounds pretty of, neat. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up. That inspired all the other towns in the right. world. Right. Hmm. Right. That's a mistake from England. Absolutely. Maybe on a boat. Yeah. Love it. Clark, New England's official Sub-Zero and Wolf showroom and test kitchen offers three reasons to begin your project here. Explore the world's finest appliances. Then cook and taste Wolf's culinary perfection. Be inspired by innovative design. Do you crave extraordinary? Visit ClarkLiving.com to plan your visit. Technology is becoming a must-have for most areas of our homes, so it's important to get familiar with what your options are. Add a touchless kitchen faucet as an affordable solution to help you get on track. Consult with a Kohler specialist to explore all the possibilities to make your home work for you. This tip is brought to you by Kohler Signature Store by Supply New England. With eight generations of exquisite craftsmanship, Kumar brings a whole new meaning to passion and precision. Their treasures come from remote corners of the earth, traveling across many oceans. The Kubi family brings to the United States the largest selection of exotic stones. Kumar, when only the finest will do. From the moment you see it, it commands your respect. You can feel its immense power. The only way to master it is to venture inside. Go ahead, dive in. The GMC Sierra. We are professional grade. Pursuit, built to a higher standard. Many try to replicate. Pursuit continues to innovate with cutting edge features and top notch technology. Offshore, center console, dual console, sport coupe, and the sport tender. We have boats from 23 to 38 feet, and once you own one, you will feel the difference. We know you have a choice, and you can put your trust in us to deliver a vessel that will take you where you want to go. Visit your factory authorized dealer today and experience the passion we have built into each and every one of our boats. Visit PursuitBoats.com and explore, experience, enjoy your life in Pursuit. We're up before. Now. We're up the floor, and this floor is the master bedroom floor. So this is like a sitting area. I'm loving all the purple tones. So the reason why there's purple here, it was because of the purple glass. And the purple glass is from, they say, of course I don't know any of this is true or not, but what I've heard is the glass came from England on a boat, and there was a batch of it that wasn't good. It was faulty glass. And so there's a bunch of houses on Beacon Hill, I think right on Beacon Street, that have this glass that were being built. And um, it was a mistake, but it's beautiful. It's and that inspired all the other towns in the right. world. Right, right. That's a mistake from England. Absolutely. Maybe on a boat. Yeah. Love it. So this is yours? This is my room, yep. Everything is so I think soft. before I met Jean, I didn't even know what some of these things were. Jean turned me on to like very nice things, but I was an easy uh, student. I liked yes. everything. You mean the fabrics, the mm -hmm. materials, but they're yeah. all of such high quality. And it makes a difference, I think. It does. Everything's just so nice and yeah. soft. Thank you. Thanks. Very nice. And then let's go down here, Parker. That's not too shabby, no. I have to say. You can have a fire soak in your tub. Mm -hmm. And meditate with the queen. With the queen. She has her eyes closed. She so does. She's meditating. She yeah. is. 
I have two, two sons and two stepsons. And so um, I wanted rooms for them. And so this is their floor. Um, so this is Sam's room. Jean wanted to paint the floors white. And I said, are you kidding me? But it looks great. Yeah, it does. There is a story for this room, how it got um, the coloring here. Uh -huh. And that is because of this piece of art. So this piece of art caught my eye. But I was doubting myself because I thought it was very childlike. And I'm thinking, why do I like this art? The name of this print is called Nick's Room. No. Yeah. So I thought, OK, that's it. I have to buy it. <laughs> and it's Nick's Room. It's Nick's Room. So I got it for Nick's Room. And so of course, that put the direction of the, the ceiling color. One more. And so this is where the help lives. Yep. Oh. This is where the guest room. So it was split up into rooms. See the different colors of yes. the beams? So there's a room divided here. And so you this was that. open. Yeah. Because it was kind of kind of funky. Uh-huh. At four o'clock, mm -hmm. you're still here at four o'clock, these lights and the windows will all come on. Maybe that's why people call it the Christmas house. Well they used to do it a lot in the old days. Candles in the window was supposed to be like here. I love the look. I could have it all year round. I love the way it looks. Special. Very special. Coming up. I feel like it's a magic wallpaper. You want to touch it. You want to be in the room. Isn't that great? Yeah. Yeah. Eat. So good. Mmm. Oh my God. So good. Innovation. Technology. Design. It is why the Seaport District is the fastest growing area in Boston. It's also the reason we selected the Innovation District as the home of Seven Tide. If you're looking for a one-of-a-kind experience filled with design inspiration, a place where you can explore, see your ideas come to life, this is the place. Think of Seven Tide as a design adventure for your home, featuring the most trusted top-tier brands in their industries. For homeowners and designers alike, it's a unique approach to home design. You can visit Clark's newest Sub-Zero and Wolf showroom and test kitchen, giving you hands-on access to the world's finest appliances, or take in the country's first experience center for Marvin windows and doors. Our goal is to provide inspiration in an exceptional space that offers a relaxed and very personal experience. We don't sell anything here. If you like what you see, we'll refer you to an authorized dealer. But while you're at Seven Tide, there's no pressure. Even the parking is complimentary. We want to cultivate an atmosphere that's free from anxiety so you can focus on what's right for the design of your home. New England has some of the finest designers in the country, and here you'll see an exciting array of their work in full-scale kitchens. You'll be able to see, touch, and even taste your kitchen design. Both inside and out, Seven Tide offers the perfect setting to bring your ideas to life. We want you to rethink what's possible. Adjacent to Clark, you'll find Marvin windows and doors. They offer a high-tech, high-touch experience that invites you to reset your expectations for what a home can be. After visiting Marvin, you'll never think about windows and doors the same way again. Whether you're a homeowner or a designer, building a new custom home or remodeling, we invite you to come experience the possibilities. Come be inspired, be informed, and ultimately be at home at Seven Tide. For more information for your home inspiration, visit SevenTide.com. Yours by design. After touring Cynthia's beautiful home, I met up with architect Tobin Schulman. Hello. Hi. How are you? Great. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Great, beautiful place. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> here we are. I thought maybe we'd start from the walk just talking about the neighborhood. Sure. Maybe cross the street. Sounds great. And go yeah. to the park. To work in this neighborhood. It's fantastic. It's an unbelievable uh, place to work and place to live. And obviously when you're dealing with a historic structure in such a historic neighborhood, one of the biggest challenges is, is the regulatory oversight that you're facing. Um, and it's great because it's the fact that we're in a historic district means that we have Beacon Hill. Without the historic district, Beacon Hill would have become the skyscrapers you see elsewhere in Boston. The chance to renovate this property was one that we absolutely jumped at. I mean, it was originally built in 1828, 1829. People live a little differently now than they used to, so. Yes, and Asher Benjamin. And Asher Benjamin, <laughs> designed, designed by Asher Benjamin, the original architect, and so when you, are dealing with uh, 
a piece of art, really, that was done by a master of the art. One fun thing that we did that I was really happy about was there's a, an interwoven wood carving that you see on the front door. Yes. And we were able to duplicate that in the cabinetry that we put above the hood uh, in the kitchen over the range. And so, so just like an echo of that. An echo of that, and you want to ask yourself all the time what would Asher Benjamin do yes. when you're looking for how you're going to solve a given layout problem or design. Issue. So res respecting where it comes from, but Absolutely. also putting your own imprint on it, I would imagine. Well, you have to, and, mm -hmm. and you have to make the house work so that it will continue to be used for the next 150 years. So some, someday so. someone will say, what would Tobin Schumann do? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the hope, right? Well, that that's is the hope. The hope and that they would treat it with the same respect yes. and, would, and that it would stay a landmark in the city for a long time. And it's starting to snow. It is so beautiful. I'm here at 75 Chestnut, and I'm here to meet Jean Burbridge, the lead interior designer for Cynthia's Home. Jean, it's so great to be with you, to talk to you about this project. I'm so excited. I brought my phone because I wanted to look at some of the photos and just talk to you about them. This is the dining room. Uh -huh. So the paper in the dining room, the wall color changes depending upon day, evening, reflection, candlelight. You know, we've got a chandelier. A chandelier light makes it look different. It goes from like pale gray to silver to lavender, and then it goes a little green. It's a ma I feel like it's a magic wallpaper. And the notion on it is, it is a silver leaf paper that um, there was tea paper way back in the day um, that had this feeling to it where you, you see the squares on the wallpaper. Yes. When people didn't have access to wallpaper, that um, boxes of tea would come wrapped in paper from a humidity standpoint. Mm -hmm. They Think of tissue paper. Mm. They took tissue paper and then used it as wallpaper. So that's kind of going way back to the history of it. And that is a beautiful, beautiful, like you want to touch it, you want to be in the room. As a designer, do you say each room is its own space? Obviously you do. But how do they play together? There had to be a flow where we wanted every room in the house to feel like it belonged to the house. Yeah. And um, she also looked at the house as she was a caretaker of the house, that she would, um, it had been around for years and years, she would do it right, meaning honoring the house. And then when it was done, she knew that other people would also come in and take care of the house after her. So everything she did, she wanted to do with architectural integrity for the house, mm -hmm. but make it right for her. Yeah. So respecting for the past, family. but making it work for, for their family and, and for mm -hmm. who she is. And uh, yeah. spent days and days, yeah. and days and days and days, or a lifetime mm -hmm. in there, just mm -hmm. appreciating the details. So nice to meet you. So nice to spend mm -hmm. time talking about this project. It was beautiful. I'm sure our viewers will absolutely love it. Yeah, Jean, Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's been fabulous. We're right here in Davio's Boston, and I am here with uh, Steve DiFilippo, and he is a restaurateur, yes. the owner, a chef. So for those who don't know your story, can you tell sure. us your story okay, before you come and cook all with right, me? All right, all right. We started on Newbury Street in 1985, right, which is 32 years ago, if you're good at math. <laughs> and here I am. I'm still here. You know, we have eight restaurants now, almost 10 restaurants. We're all over the place. We're in Atlanta, Philly, New York, Boston, about to open in California. So we're all over the place, and uh, we really feel like we're just getting started. Now, I hear that you, um, you were sneaking into kitchens. Yeah. When you were young. Yeah. We used to travel and my my father, they would get calls in the room. Uh, we have your son down here in the kitchen again, you know, and I would be like, you know, 15 years old and I would get so a lot of trouble. Like I, I like all kinds of food. I've traveled all over the world. I, I've been very fortunate. Uh, There's really nothing I, I don't. I try everything once. I really do. This is what's really cool. This is fresh pasta that was made and we actually put it into this, this thing here and we put it right here. So every order that we make at Davia's is made just for you. We don't pre-make it. A lot of restaurants pre-make the pasta and then they dunk it in water and it's, oh, it's warm it up a little bit. It's awful because that, you can't make it all dente. But you know, here we go. We make all this. Look at this. It's just, it's just beautiful. Nice fresh pasta. All right. And how long did that take? Right. I mean, it's just like it's just so quick. And there we go. And that was literally like 30 seconds. It's amazing that. When you think about restaurants, how many restaurants do you know that are still here from 1985? We are blessed yeah. by our team that works here and the people that come to that front door. I'm just so honored to be doing what I do. I, I just love it so much. Isn't that great? Yeah. Look at that. You? Oh, that's what it's so good. <laughs> mm. oh my God. Coming up.
Well, look, look at this. Look at how this came together. This, this just happened in what? A minute, two minutes, and it's good yeah, to go. Real time, real time. Real time. Let's go to shop. Let's go to shop. Let's go to shop. Shoreline Pools has become Cape Cod's largest builder. They're a team of dedicated and creative professionals that build pools where memories are made and good times are shared with friends and family. They specialize in 3D design, so you can see what pool will fit the best for your home. Shoreline Pools doesn't just build pools, they build dreams. So we're here in Cynthia's kitchen. Beautiful kitchen, wouldn't you say? It's one of the best. Yeah. Aren't we lucky? Uh, Steve Filippo from Davio's and Rodney, if you're gonna see Rodney going in and out, back and forth, uh, they happen to be with us to cook in Cynthia's kitchen tonight. So anyway, we're gonna make yeah. some gnocchi. That sounds you ready, good. You ready to get going here? Yes, I so, am. So well, the secret to Davio's gnocchi is actually, it's about the flour. We try not to use a lot of flour. It's mostly about the potato. So the potato is really light and fluffy and we just use the flour to help bond it. So we got the flour in here, right? Yes, yes. All right. All so, right you're already getting wild dropping yeah. stuff. So right. you know, you definitely, want to, you definitely want to season it with all the right. salt and the pepper. All right. And then you want to add some cheese. You know, it, it, this is just potato and cheese and salt. So taste it taste it. a little bit. You know, see, see like what I would use a spoon <laughs> because <laughs> I'm not I, 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 read a, I read a story the other day about people on TV are actually <laughs> teaching bad habits yes. to the people out there, yes. and they're all getting sick at home. So as you can see, I use a spoon. So now, oh, once I add the egg, all right, then I can't taste it because you really don't want to eat raw egg. So all right. when you really start yeah. mixing it. So yeah. why, don't you, why don't you start mixing it? Yeah. Get in there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to slice a piece off and then we're going to actually roll the gnocchi. Okay. All right, I'm going to so show Rodney's you how we do that. So I'm going to give Steve a piece. Yeah, look at this. And actually, you See that? Get a look at that. Okay. And when you want this, uh, you know, if, if you boil to dry, you sprinkle yeah. a little flour over there and then just a little bit like that. Okay. I do remember this from my grandmother and all the pies. Yeah, yeah. You just cut them like this. All right. She's a perfectionist. I can see that. She yeah. likes Santa cards for his <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take these. We're gonna put them on a sheet pan. and We're gonna freeze them. Oh, okay. Right? Very important. You want to freeze them. All right. And you will not believe how great this pie making is. Yeah. So, but we're gonna do is we're gonna trim it just a little bit. Take some of the fat off. We're gonna take some of these herbs and we're gonna with olive oil and a little Worcestershire sauce and we're gonna marinate it overnight. Very important to do that just to give the help. Just to give the steak a little bit more flavor. All right, so what we're gonna do is we have some parsley here. Yep. All right, and then we have some fresh thyme. All right, and then some rosemary. And then, so then the Worcestershire <laughs> goes on. All right, and then we take some oil, some olive oil. Very, very important. And what we're gonna do is just kind of give it some love and push this all around. Okay, really, really important. Massage it. Yeah, just yeah. massage it in. All right, so that's it. And then we're just gonna wrap it up and we're going to put it in the, in the refrigerator and we'll be good to go. Okay. You ready to make a sauce? We're, yes. going to, we're going to go to the stove. So we make sure the pot is in the top. And then we take the, the mushrooms, throw it in there. All right. And then we're going to season it with parsley. All right. A little salt and pepper. Very important. Okay. And then the butter. You know, the other secret is to make a sauce come together is you take some of the pasta water that you cooked with. 
So this water has a lot of flavor in it because the gnocchi was cooked in there, the salt, the salted water, and we add a little to that, and that's really what brings the whole sauce together. All right, look at this thing. See, see, see what happened when I did that? Yeah. Look at that. Mm. You guys see that at home? Look at that. So then the sauce is pretty much done, and what I do is the gnocchi's already, already cooked, and we just take it and we throw it in. Look at how this came together. This, this just happened in what? A minute, two minutes, and it's good yeah, to go. Yeah, real time, real time. Real time. time. And we're just gonna put a little truffle oil on top. Just put a little cheese on top. I need a spoon because you know. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. We don't want to get in trouble with the, uh, the FDA or somebody here. And here you go. Yes. Here's thank a gnocchi. You, thank that, you. Oh. That's the one you made. So if you don't like it, it's it? your fault. Well, it might not be. Very I can yeah. taste extra little love in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cynthia's dinner party guests began to arrive. A writer, a physical therapist, a polo player, a fashion model, a psychologist, a candy maker, an interior designer. You get the picture. The room was filling up with Cynthia's friends, all creative and talented women. While the meat was cooking, I joined Cynthia and her friends for the holiday stroll, a neighborhood tradition with caroling, tree lighting, and some good old cheer. Beautiful scene behind us. It's beautiful. Yeah, it is. I mean, that's it's Christmas Christmas-y. Yeah. It's Christmas There's nothing still. like New England in the, in the winter, is it really? <laughs> Christmas time. Sam's <laughs> <laughs> the bridge. <laughs> Indeed, shopping Charles Street is an important part of the stroll. I found a fetching hat. Is it your first time strolling? It is. I love it. Yes. So good, right? Yes. So what is Get your ready. best selling item here? Like Everything. Like, Everything? But I think you all need these Russian hats to stroll. Oh, I definitely need yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. It totally looks amazing. Damon. I love it. So good, right? <laughs> Perfect. Once we'd strolled up an appetite, we headed back to Cynthia's to enjoy the feast. What we're gonna do, here's the gnocchi that we made, you remember? So what we're gonna do, this is family style, so it's really fun, it's Christmas, right? We're gonna hand this around, everyone's gonna have their own little gnocchis. Then after this, I'm gonna bring out a beautiful piece of that Brant prime rib that you and I kind of massage, right? Yes. It's beautiful. You uh, and then we have butternut squash, and then we have uh, mashed potatoes, and we have Brussels sprouts with a carrot puree. And then after that, we have a warm chocolate cake with beautiful homemade vanilla ice cream. Well, this is what it is all about. Beautiful, lifelong friends, Cynthia's friends, and the beautiful designer, Jean, and also Steve DiFilippo from Davios. Yeah, this is the way it is. We did a living from Beacon Hill. Until next time, I'm Parker Kelly. Cheers. Cheers. New England Living is brought to you by Clark, Sub-Zero and Wolf, Kohler and Seven Tide.